Hi guys, my name's Christian. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today, I got something really special for you guys. Uh, today, I'm going to teach you guys how to mod a PlayStation 2 Fat Edition in the year 2023. I've been able to figure out a really, really easy way to get this thing modded. And not only that, we're going to do it with a two terabyte hard drive. Why? Because, well, that's the most that you can do in one of these models. But um, first, we're going to start with a little bit of, uh, you know, shopping, I guess, so to say, right? Because we need to have all the right things for the mod. So um, let's do that, guys. Let me show you guys everything that you're going to need. Here's we're going to go on over to eBay. There's a couple things we're going to need. The first thing we're going to need is the Game Star SATA adapter we're gonna just look for one that has a u.s seller you need one of these the back piece so like this one for example is the right piece the one on the left here the game star sata adapter this is the one on the left with sata price ide we're not doing ID. next thing you need we're gonna do a fm remix boot this one looks perfect and i think it's from new york yeah so dude i would buy this and then of course, you're gonna need a hard drive, guys. This is the one you're gonna want, guys. Right here. This one should be fine for all intents and purposes. Let's see, right here. All right, guys, right here is the SATA cable attachment, and right here is the, right here's power. Yeah, power and SATA, right? And those will be able to connect to your motherboard, all right? Anyways, those are the three main components you're gonna need. You're also gonna need a USB drive, like a flash drive. Just get a flash drive, guys. I mean, it's special. Like, uh, I think the one that I have is just like a SanDisk Cruiser, 64 gigs, USB 2.0 is fine. So that is your shopping list, guys. Today, what we're actually gonna be using is gonna be like a 3000. And the reason being is, well, we're using this big old Brand new Seagate Barracuda drive, right? All right, all right, it's a 3.5 millimeter form factor. And, well, that's exactly the size that we have to work with in the little hard drive slot for the PlayStation 2. If you put a 3.5 drive in there, it's not gonna have as much wiggle and play. As you can see, it fits like a freaking glove, right? We're gonna be using a brand new one that I just bought at Best Buy, okay? Also, another thing with respect to like, the mod itself and how to save money. PS2s are like $100 on average nowadays. So if you want to save a little bit of money or just kind of like use your brain, look for a friend who has an old PS2 and the disk drive doesn't work. As long as it turns on, then you should be good. Or you can even like use a Japanese PS2. It's not going to be able to play American discs. So, I mean, that's not really a problem because we're going to we're gonna boot it through the memory card. So Japanese PS2. You can get one for like $80. Cool. So let's look at some of the stuff that we got. All right, sweet. Let's get started on this. All right, guys. So let's just jump right into the modding. I'm going to split this up into a couple parts. First part's going to be real simple. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to update the version of you launch elf that we have on our free McBoot memory card. First thing that I'm going to want you guys to do is check the about me on your computer. See if you're 32 bit or 64 bit. I'm 64 bit. We're going to just type it into Google. We're going to click it. We're going to look up here. It's the latest version 64 bit. And we're not going to do ARM64. This is fine. It downloads really fast. We're going to go to our downloads and we're going to right click it right here. Run as administrator. We're going to click yes. It's going to install in lightning fast speed. Let's, let's see. We're going to format the USB drive. The, here is my thumb drive. Okay, guys, you want to get a thumb drive that still can format to FAT32. Um, you're going to want one that can do FAT32. If you don't have one that can do FAT32, there is a program that you can download. It's actually for modding a Wii, 
but um you can like google it and youtube it and it's really easy let me see if i still have it here somewhere we backup it's called we backup manager all right so worst case scenario or uh you need to you know just use what you have you'll be able to format any usb drive to fat format to fat 32 and we're gonna just do default allocation size and then the default fat 32 we're gonna start format that that's formatting if you do like one of those other formats the ps2 is not going to recognize these we want to download you launch l 4.3 Real easy to find that ps2-home.com. You can just straight up go to that website. I'm going to leave the link in the bio, but you can go to the downloads drop down and look for you launch elf. Okay, you you launch elf will be right here 4.43. We're going to click it and download it. All right, great. So it's here. It is. I'm going to teach you guys how to use uh, seven zip. Super easy. All you got to do is right click and then seven zips right here. You can just do extract here, that's fine. And it pops up right here without the zipper. And here's Boot Elf. We're gonna click it. We're gonna drag it. We're gonna drop it down in the USB drive, which I have right there. Here it is. And there it goes. So that part is done. We're gonna go ahead and inject that. All right, guys, the USB drive is ready and i'm gonna go ahead and plug it into usb slot on the top i think you can use the bottom one but why not we're gonna use the top i'm gonna put the memory card in slot two guys always put it in slot two uh all it takes is one of your doofus friends to accidentally create a save file in slot one because like every game asks you do you want to create a new file do you want to create a new file do you want to create a, a new file almost by default so if this is in slot one, it's going to get overwritten or, you know, something bad's going to happen. The old mighty PS doble. PS double. All right. And there we got the PS2 on screen. All right. Great. Guys, it's going to look, your memory card might look a little different, but most importantly, as long as we have version 1.966 up in the top right, you're in good standing. Also, in somewhere you're gonna find you launch here, all right? There's a couple stuff. Sometimes they're organized a little differently, you know, different people set these up. But just look for you launch elf. We're gonna go ahead and hit enter. This is pretty much kind of like a directory and similar to like a computer. Uh, and in the top right corner, it says launch elf 4.43. Now, I already have an updated version, that's why you're seeing that. But a lot of you guys are gonna be seeing. Uh, launch elf version 4.42 and if that's the case then it's not a problem because we're about updated so we're gonna go press circle circles to move forward triangles to move back and then mc1 is master uh, excuse me master card uh, memory card zero so that's the left slot the right slot is memory card slot one uh, okay that's where we have our memory card right there hdd zero that's where your hard drive is I actually don't have it in the console yet right now so Maybe go in there later. Mass is where you're gonna find your mass storage device. I guess your, uh, you know, your USB. So let's go in there. Look at that, boot elf. That's the file that we just pasted to the root of the USB. Now you're gonna hit. There's a little, uh, there's a little key at the very bottom that tells you what each button does. Uh, as you can see, pressing R1 will bring up a little menu. Then we're gonna use the D-pad to get to copy, which is right at the top. I'm going to go ahead and just hit circle because that's the OK button. So we're going to copy. Now I'm going to hit triangle to go up. I'm going to go over to memory card one. That's actually the right slot, the second slot, the right side slot. We're going to hit enter with circle. And um, we're going to look for the boot.elf file and we're pretty much just going to paste on top of it and overwrite it. Um, your directory might look a little bit different here. So your boot.elf might be in apps, right? But mine isn't, so I'm gonna go back up. I was able to actually find mine here in boot. So try to look for a boot folder, guys. 
And I'm gonna go ahead, okay. I'm gonna go to boot elf right there. It's right at the top. So that in essence is gonna be your version of boot.elf that's outdated, AKA 4.42. Right now we're gonna overwrite it. I'm gonna hit R1 to bring up the menu. And then I'm gonna simply go down and press circle on paste. That's pasting and it's overwriting it. And it's doing its little process there. Also, a little fun tip, when you are in here, you can actually boot straight to something else. So you can boot into different apps that are on that main dashboard when you turn on the console. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just boot it. You guys can press circle here. So on the top right, you're still gonna see Launch Elf version 4.42. Now, when you press circle here, it's gonna launch it, the brand new version, and then it should say 4.43 in the top right hand corner. It'll say no disk over here in the top left. And you will have an update version of the most update, the most recent version of Launch Elf that's going to let you format the two terabyte hard drive. And we are good here, guys. So we've officially updated uh, Launch Elf to the most current version. All right, guys, so I'm going to take a break here and then we're going to start looking at what else we need to complete the mod. All right, welcome back, guys. We're on to the next part. What we're going to do is we're going to format the new hard drive for the PlayStation 2. So again, I told you guys that the way we're going to be doing this is it's going to be for a more modern setup. If you have like a gaming PC or you know, a PC that you can easily access the motherboard. This is actually a lot easier than a lot of you guys might know. So let me just give you guys kind of a little overlook what this looks like. Okay, so here's the hard drive. This is a SATA cable, and then this is the power cable. The SATA cable you can get uh, at Best Buy for, you know, like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. The power cable, it, You'll already have it. It's part of your your power source, your battery source, uh, and it's gonna be able to find it on the other side. Um, guys, just take the door off your PC. You'll see a bunch of cables on that side. It looks just like this. This is what the power cable looks like. Okay, you just run it through this side so it's easily accessible, and then you know you look for a SATA port on your computer. Make sure it's one that doesn't interfere with um, with like your M2 or anything like that. If that all sounds like a lot of jargon, guys, then you might just have to, you know, buy a different kind of uh, adapter. But assuming that, you know, you're living in the now and you have fairly, you know, up-to-date equipment, it shouldn't be too much. All right. You're gonna wanna turn your computer off completely. And then there's also a power cutoff switch on the back. Make sure you turn that off before connecting the drive and connecting the power um, to the drive, the, the SATA and the power. Uh, you know, obviously try not to like zap your computer, try to touch the metal on the outside before so you don't statically shock anything of the components in there. Uh, and then power the computer on, okay? All right, great, we're there guys. Uh, drive is connected, computer's on, all right. Uh, let me go to screen share and I'm going to show you guys how to get this drive ready. We're going to go to Disk management. And this will come up. Create and format partitions, yada, yada, yada. And you can just hit cancel right here, honestly. I don't know if it's going to come up like that. This is literally my first time connecting this disk. Let me look for it. 1000 terabytes. Oh, it's this one. It's this disk number two. It's actually unallocated. Disk three. This is disk four, which is my main drive, I believe. C drive. And this is partition one, partition two. So that's my main C drive. This is my one terabyte drive. This is one 20 gigabyte drive that I have, a 500 gigabyte drive. So that would mean this one's actually unallocated. It's actually fine, guys. It's ready to rock. Uh, you might have to properties no you can actually leave it like this unallocated this should be just fine we're gonna go ahead and actually just 
pretty sure you can just right click and then delete a volume. You don't want to have any separate partitions in it, right? That's the main thing if you're using like a used drive. Um, otherwise, if you buy one new from the store and you plug it in, it should actually be good. So you might even be able to just skip this step and plug it into the PS2. But if for some reason further along in the process, the drive can't be recognized in the PS2, uh, the, the U launch where we're going to be formatting it, then you might have to go back here and try to get it to be on this unallocated status. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get back over here. Da, 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 guys, I'm going to go ahead and power the computer off. Whenever we do any changes to the hard drive or connect it to the computer, we don't want to connect it or disconnect it while the computer is running. And you guys feel free to correct me on that. But honestly, I don't want to risk corrupting a drive or creating a shock or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and power down and we're gonna go ahead and, well actually, well I got you here. This is essentially what we're gonna do next because I have an additional drive so I can just kind of show you. This is the game star adapter, okay? And this is my drive. Now, as you can see right here, these line up with these grooves. So get the board the PCB board facing down and this part facing up right you just simply connect it now it's connected to the drive we're gonna push it into the bay in the back of the console we're gonna make it real snug all right and then you can tighten these little screws with like a penny or a dime so it's not shaking around trying not to move it uh, put the memory card in slot two and we're gonna power the console and we're gonna format the drive. All right, cool So I'll see you guys there in just a second Okay, welcome back guys. All right, I went ahead and powered off the PC removed the drive connected the SATA adapter to the drive uh, Put the drive into the console made sure that it clicked and snug tighten the little screws with the penny now I'm going to be powering on the console. There's our free McBoot memory card allowing us to boot into free McBoot. And we're gonna go ahead down and where we're gonna be uh, formatting this for, with this hard drive, it's gonna be actually on the PS2, not on the computer. So we're gonna go ahead and go to U launch elf, enter. All right, guys. Once we are in U Launch Elf and it's the right version, all right, thank God that we updated that. Now we can format the two terabyte drives. So we're gonna go to File Browser. You'd think that you'd go to Hard Drive Zero, but we're not gonna go there. We're actually gonna go to Miscellaneous. Let's circle, and then you're gonna go to Hard Drive Manager, okay? We're gonna hit OK. All right, folks. It's loading the hard drive module. If you hear your hard drive disk starting to spin. Wow, this is great guys. It's good news actually. Uh, this hard drive is compatible. Now let's go and hit R1 guys. And we're gonna go down to where it says format. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit circle through okay. Format entire hard drive, destroy all partitions. Okay, yes. And it's gonna say formatting hard drive dot 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 in the top left corner. And we just kind of wait. All right, guys, that's great. Awesome, guys, we had success with a modern day drive that's literally on store shelves at Best Buy. We've officially uh, formatted the PlayStation 2 drive, two terabytes. Now what we're gonna do is hit R1. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and create the partition that we need. You guys need this partition. Even if we're not going to do artwork, which we're not, we're not going to do artwork. We're not going to do any of that crap. Um, because honestly, I swear that's what kind of puts everybody off to these tutorials in the first place. It's just complicated. Listen, I just want all my games on there and I want to play them. I just want to make it as easy as possible. Um, we're going to go ahead and create this uh, partition that we need with the circle button. And again, it's capitals. O. P. Oh, 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 oh guys and burning how do i go backspace press x see you see guys you gotta listen i gotta listen to myself it's plus opl ladies and gentlemen plus opl 
Okay. Maybe plus, and the next is back space. Oh. That's the plus, right? Yeah, it looks like a cross. Plus O P L. Okay. Guys, we have 2,000 terabytes, to, uh, excuse me, 2,000 megabytes to work with. So, based on what I've seen on forums and heard from other people, it has to be exactly two gigabytes. And I've had success with that. So, we're going to just push the slider over until it's just over 2,000. It's like 2,048. We're gonna hit circle again. Remember circles accept. We're gonna create a new partition. Okay. And then we're just gonna chill for a second and let it do its thing. And there it is, OPL. You guys use the D-pad to go down. It's uh, two gigabytes. Guys, we've officially formatted the hard drive. It's all ready to go. I'm going to turn the console off. All right, um, I'm gonna disconnect it and I'm gonna turn my PC off. Cut the power off completely. Use the SATA cable to reconnect it to the hard drive. And I'm also gonna connect the power to the hard drive and we're gonna reboot the computer. And now it's formatted for PS2. Okay guys, um, as you can probably tell, I recorded this part of the video with my mic muted. So that's all right. I'm gonna go through it a little quicker and it pretty much covers everything anyway. So guys, what we're gonna to wanna to do is download HDL Bash Installer. Link is in the description. Pretty straightforward. It's on GitHub and you get the X64 version. We're gonna go ahead and download that. Okay. Once that's downloaded, you're gonna right click it. Remember, we downloaded 7zip. And with that, we're just gonna right click, hit 7zip. We can extract it here. That's fine. It'll put it in the root of the downloads folder. And what we're gonna do is drag this whole new folder down over to the desktop. Okay, you can rename the folder if you like, it makes it a little simpler. Um, always try to update the version. It'll always prompt you to update it when you, when you open it. Okay, let me skim through here. This is how you open the program, guys. It's got a little PlayStation 2 console. If you look closely with the admin shield, you're gonna wanna right click it every time you're gonna access it and run it as administrator every time, okay? And it'll open up, real easy program to use. All you have to do is click on search PS2 hard drives. It's that blue box up at the top. Once you do that, it will find it. Uh, let's see, I haven't done it yet, or I did yet, yeah, yeah, it found it. I clicked find the hard drive, or maybe I didn't, did I? I'm about to, there we go, clicked it, and then it founds it. It found it right there, formatted for PS2. Awesome, great, that means that the formatting worked, the partition worked, everything worked. Installing games on this program is super easy, guys. Um, all you have to do is click that box on the right side that says search games, and it'll bring you into your directory. Uh, so we'll look at your directory, wherever you store your games. I got mine over here. And I'm going to just select the game. You can select as many as you want. As long as they're in disk image file, ISO uh, format, you're going to be good. Okay, so let's do some Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk has been loaded in. Just hit OK. We're going to add another game. Okay, same way. Add another game. You can just highlight all of them at once and just it'll just transfer them all in. All right, guys. Next thing we're going to do is simply click install. You don't have to change the UDMA. You don't got to do any of that stuff. Just click install and then bam, it's going to do its thing. You can see the little uh, command window uh, as it's working, how the percentage is filling up and the transfer rate's nice and high. That's excellent. All right, guys, and we're going to keep going. And then when it's done installing both games, it will look a little like that. Great. Awesome, guys. We have officially installed games onto the PS2 hard drive. And yes, let's see if I was going to say anything else there. Probably not, guys. So I'm going to go in ahead and uh, give you guys a little more details in the next part. All right, thanks. Just power off the computer and uh, Make sure you power cut off, disconnect the drive. We're gonna plug it back into the PlayStation and show you how to access the games. Alrighty. 
Okay guys, yeah, same thing with this part of the video. I accidentally muted my mic that day, but that's all right guys, I'll go through it even quicker. We're gonna connect the drive back to the, uh, to the console as I showed you earlier in the video. All right, we're gonna launch the uh, console and then uh, we're gonna move on into a new program in the console. We're gonna move into this program, OPN Launcher, OPL. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and click it, all right? That's where you launch games from. Okay. So we're gonna launch that up. It's gonna load. It takes a couple minutes because the drive has to load. That's fine. You might have a different version of OPL. It might vary in how it looks, but usually whatever version you have, you should be fine with. Um, we're gonna change some settings first. So we're gonna want you guys to go to settings. All right, and I'm gonna just pause this so I can tell you what you need to do. Uh, debug, disable debug colors can be on, that's fine. Uh, IGR path doesn't have to be set. You can change the select button. The only thing that you guys really need to change here is the bottom here where it says USB device start mode. You can have that off. You want it to automatically read the hard drive. So make sure auto is on for hard drive. Um, the hard drive spit down speed can stay the same. Check fragmentation for USB. I mean, we don't even have a USB drive that we have games on, so we don't really need that on, but whatever. All you gotta make sure is that USB start mode's off and then have it auto start in hard drive. You're gonna go ahead and go back. Once you go back, or you hit okay at the bottom rather, um, these changes are not gonna save unless if you physically go down to right here where it says save changes and press X and then it says there in dark text changes settings saved. You can also change the color of your text if you want in display settings. Um, I think, uh, do I go into this here? Display settings? No, I don't. Um, to get to your games, guys, you're gonna go ahead and hit circle. Bottom right corner says circle for games list. And then here they are. All right, one thing I wanna tell you guys about games. Is this when I go into the display settings? Yeah, so you can change the display settings here, guys. I would like to have video mode on auto and widescreen turned off. Personally, again, if you make changes there, then you're going to have to save them right here. Okay? And then you press circle for your games. Uh, I want to tell you about games, guys. 90% of games are going to run right out of the box, which means you don't have to do anything to them. Uh, a lot of other games, they're going to have these modes, quote-unquote modes, that you can turn on. Uh, and those modes will help the game run. Some games get stuck at loading screens, some games crash at a certain mission, some games don't even start. So, 90% of games, again, you're going to just be able to press X there and run it, and you're going to be fine. But, just to kind of give you guys a forewarning, there's a website with a compatibility list. It's called the OPL Compatibility List, and you can find it on Google. I'll link it in the description. And, uh... I'm going to just let you know some of the codes here. You can press triangle on a game, right? And each individual game you can set the codes for and save it. So I know that all Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, for example, it's not going to run properly unless if you go ahead into the settings with triangle and or well, this is Tony Hawk's Underground 2 that we're looking at, actually. Uh, I know that Tony Hawk's Underground 2, you need mode 2 on and that's it. Just mode 2 on and you save it. See if you caught that. Um, yeah, you go down to the bottom, after you toggle it on, you go to the bottom, hit save changes, all right? Excellent, and then what do we got? Mortal Kombat. I know that that game needs a couple codes too, so that one I know it's uh, mode, what do we put there? Mode six I think goes on. Yeah, mode six went on. We just simply go down to save changes, bam. All right, and then you can just go ahead and launch your game. Once you launch your game, you're not going to have to change the UDMA, but some games you will have to change the UDMA. Just a heads up. If you guys ever need help, you can just ask me in the comments, and I'll look up some stuff, and I'll let you know what I find. Okay, and then you can just boot the game, and then bam, da -da -da -da, we have... Tony Hawk's Underground 2. See, like, it would get stuck right here if that code wasn't set on that loading bar, and then you're going to have to restart the PlayStation, and it's just never going to work. Um, not to put you guys off, though, like, 90% of games are just going to play immediately. 
And then this right here is just kind of me giving you a little proof in the pudding with regard to why it's safer to keep the memory card in slot two. All right, because this game is obviously asking me to make a save file right now in memory card slot one. If the homebrew memory card's in slot one, we're going to overwrite files on it and we're not going to have a modded console anymore. Now, are we? All right, great. And that's how you launch games with OPL launcher using a free McBoot card, using a 3.5 millimeter physical hard drive, and a GameStar SATA back piece adapter. All right. Dude, we did it. Yay. Excellent, guys. Thank you, guys. Check out the video. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more things with respect to HBL batch. Um, as much as I know about it in the next next segment. And then I'll just leave you guys with some ending remarks. All right, sweet. All right, guys. So... This is just a little footage of me adding more games. Again, you can do highlight all your games at once and then you just use the search games button. Okay, first things first, you get back in this program, search PS2 hard drives once yours is connected. It'll recognize it, you'll see it in the terminal window when it finds it. Again, search games to select all your games and then just install, all right? If you notice that, you see this uh, over here at the bottom this uh, little progress window it tells you how fast the games are downloading listen i've had drives in the past that once they get to like around 300 megabytes uh excuse me 300 gigabytes it starts slowing down that transfer rate starts you know bouncing all over the place from like five megabytes per second to 10 to 40 back to 200 and then like the program almost starts um not responding so listen guys just a word of advice back up your games have them just live on your pc hard drive i don't know invest in like a really big hard drive for your computer and then you know let the ps2 games be there in case this drive ever corrupts i've had another drive um while it was adding a bunch of games this program stopped responding i'm not sure if the drive was messed up it was an old used drive that i got on ebay um i don't know if maybe the program the program the modder you know who makes it you know he's obviously always you know putting out new versions to be a little more better um so yeah my word of advice simply is just keep your games backed up on your computer in case the program lacks responding uh in case the drive corrupts somehow um your games will always be there so you could always just you know format a new drive and then just slap them all on that new drive and then bam as long as you know your games are really going to be backed up on your memory cards, so to say. You know what I'm saying? With your with your save your save files. All right, cool guys. Okay, guys. Just the last couple ending remarks. A couple more things I know about this program. If you go over here, we're usually in the install tab by default. You can go over to browse. And if you click get list, it's just going to do a scan on the drive. You can see in the terminal it'll find the games list but also right here in the white window it'll tell you everything that's on there which you know version of it and that can kind of be a good way for you to keep a keep tabs on how um, how many games you got on there uh, as far as deleting games goes I honestly know that there's a way to do it but it's complicated so you know what I mean like don't install anything that you, you think you're gonna delete and also I mean if you have two terabytes man like I mean, like, God forbid you have one game on there that you don't really want on there anymore. So just also don't mess with this hard drive management tab. I'll go back to that for a second. Uh, you don't need to do any of that stuff. As you can see, we got the console working and I don't think you need to do anything. If you're really techie, you really know what all this stuff means, you know, feel free to mess around with that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Also, it's good to have like a, a notepad list on your desktop with all your games, try to alphabetize it. That way you can keep track of what games are on the console or on the hard drive. And that's about it, guys. That is all. I know that was long and you know, a little bit of a mouthful, but you're going to be happy when you can play all those awesome PS2 games that you can't really get your hands on anymore um, because they're too expensive or, you know, it's hard to find them or uh, you don't have, yeah, you don't have the means for it. 
And another thing uh, maybe I was going to say is that you can't, you can play PS1 games on here, but you can't get them onto the hard drive with this program. You have to use something called Pop Starter. Every single time that I've tried to attempt to try to do it, it's really, really, really complicated. So, I mean, if you want to do PS1 games, I would recommend getting a PlayStation 1 console that you can mod with an X station. That's it, guys.